Good evening everybody, in today's video we'll take a closer look at the history between guitar hero Buckethead and guitar legend Sean Lane. Woo! For those who don't know, Sean Lane was a child prodigy already playing lead guitar and classical piano in clubs at the age of 14 in the late 1970s. In the early 1980s, bootlegs of Sean's playing was distributed among guitar enthusiasts by Mike Varney, the founder of shred guitar music label Shrapnel Records. What Mike Varney always does is he always he drives, he gets people on the phone a long time ago that he used to, used to and he, he starts playing these tapes on them. And whenever he talks to Paul Gilbert, all these other people, he, you know, subject him to this tape. Oh, Sean Lane, the most terrifying guy of all time. A lot of the Sean Lane stuff, though, is, you know, real... It, it's, it almost sounds two-handed, but he's doing it all with his left hand. I mean, when I'm up at Mike Varney's house, he's got some videotapes of him that are just completely amazing. He's doing like all these uh, old Hendrix songs and stuff, doing them just perfect. I mean, so whilst he was teaching a teenage pre-bucket buckethead, Paul Gilbert gave him a bootleg cassette of Sean Lane playing. And just like every other guitarist who heard the bootleg at the time, young Buckethead's mind was blown. The bootleg of Sean Lane and his style of playing would highly influence Buckethead and is the origins of some of Buckethead's more complex playing, such as the eight finger tapping technique. that I made a long time ago that was influenced by the modern classical composer named Kahneman Nancaro. And he composes by punching holes in piano rolls. And so I, I liked what he was doing, and so I tried to uh, copy it on the guitar by this bizarre editing technique where I would string together things on the guitar by playing something and then editing another thing right behind it and editing another thing right behind it. And it just sounded like insane, just, just insanity. And Buckethead got a bootleg of that some way and had no idea that it was a construction of editing. He thought I was actually playing it. And so he tried to figure out a way that it could be done by tapping with two hands on the neck and he got pretty close. It's some really, and that's, and that's the origin of some of the crazy stuff that he does. Yep, Sean Lane had composed a song that was physically impossible to play and Buckethead almost did it. What an alien. That bootleg song would eventually be reworked and released on Sean's album, The Tritone Fascination, called Kaiser Nankaro. <laughs> Sean Lane and Buckethead would eventually become friends in the early 1990s and even shared the stage together on April 30th, 1997 in New York City. On two separate occasions, Sean Lane and Buckethead have planned on making an album together. The first time in 1993. And we're trying to uh, do uh, a recording with uh, him and me, and uh, it'll be something really psycho. The second time in mid 2003, whilst Buckethead was on hiatus from Guns N' Roses along with musician Henry Kaiser, who famously gave Buckethead his custom GS guitar mentioned in our video Unsolved Buckethead Mysteries. Unfortunately, the planned album, which no doubt would have been the ultimate guitar album, never happened. Because on September 26, 2003, Sean Lane passed away at the age of 40. Sean had battled an autoimmune disease he'd had since the age of 12, a disease that caused arthritis, weight gain, weak joints and lung problems. A few days later, Buckethead's website posted an image of Sean along with the words, I feel very lucky for the few moments I got to spend with him and they are very special memories. He was by far the greatest guitar player that ever lived. More importantly, he was a great man. 
Buckethead would further pay tribute to Sean Lane at a live show in Sean's hometown of Memphis, Tennessee, holding up a sign that read, Long live Sean Lane, the greatest of all time. He'd also mentioned Sean in the 2017 Coming Alive podcast interview. He's just like uh, from outer space. He was probably the most incredible musician I've ever seen or heard. And it's beyond what I even can understand, but I got to hang around him a few times and he was like, he took so much information and I've never seen anything like that, like where he could just read many books in a day and he had just like a memory where he could remember everything. But he was, he is an insane inspiration. It's sad he's gone, but he's not gone in a lot of ways, you know. I think with people like that, their energy is way beyond their physical self. I mean, I think he'll just, he'll be around forever because it's just too big. Like Bruce Lee's around, like there's just certain people that transcend, like Jimi Hendrix, like they're just, their energy's bigger than their physical. That's how I see it. As you can tell, Sean Lee was a huge influence on Buckethead as well as other guitar greats such as Paul Gilbert, Guthrie Govan and more. Despite spending his life fighting constant pain and illness, Sean Lee released some of the most beautiful musical compositions ever created. And whilst there's so many words you can call the late Sean Lee, the words inscribed at his final resting place might say it best. Unforgettable, irreplaceable, immortal.